obviously the artists are at the core of that and they'll be presenting their new work. Please do add any comments and feedback and questions to the chat box as we'll have time for questions later. So for those that don't know us, just a little bit of background. Um, Grain is a platform for contemporary photography and a hub and network for practitioners. We're based in Birmingham in the UK and we work regionally, nationally and internationally. We commission photography, uh, curate and produce exhibitions, publish books and we work collaboratively um, on socially engaged photography projects to look at society's issues, including diversity, age, gender, rural and urban geographies, the environment, community class and social justice. We also deliver a professional development program for practitioners, which includes uh, mentoring, internships, bursaries, masterclasses and portfolio days, and also symposia. Um, the most important of which is our national symposium, which is called the State of Photography, and that is a biannual. We support photographers to grow their practice, to develop new opportunities, and to expand their networks and to innovate. And we work in partnership with many organisations to do that, including community groups, museums, galleries, universities, um, and arts organisations to deliver our programme. We're part of the UK Photography Network and we're supported by and work in partnership with Arts Council England and with Birmingham City University. When we applied for this opportunity, opportunity with Transforming Narratives, we very much wanted to highlight and to amplify the work of practitioners and to sort of look at those important and significant links that are there between artists and cities with Bangladesh and with Pakistan, and to work in partnership closely together to look at contemporary practice and heritage. We've not worked together before, and I want to take this opportunity to thank um, Rabania from Taswirgaha in Lahore, Pakistan, and Topu from Pashala Institute in Dhaka, Bangladesh, for their openness, for their ideas, for their great work and for this collaboration. It's really important for us that this digital exchange created a new dialogue and was an opportunity for artists and practitioners, not least because of this challenging year that we've all had. Um, it's amazing that artists can still have this meaningful exchange and create new work when we can't do that in a physical and live space due to COVID restrictions, the pandemic and the lockdown. So the four artists, two of which are based in Birmingham, one in Lahore and one in Dakar will speak today. They've been in dialogue, they've been sharing ideas, sharing work and uh, working collaboratively. Um, and during this event, um, the artists will um, be sharing their work on screen, as well as those partner organisations. So thank you so much again, and I'm going to move on with the introductions. I'd firstly like to introduce one of our guest speakers to say thank you and to say welcome to Hira Azmat, who is from the British Council in Pakistan. Hira is the Regional Project Manager for Transforming Narratives. Um, she's been associated with Transforming Narratives since December 2019. Um, the British Council represents two countries on the project team, Pakistan and Bangladesh, and their goal is to make internationalism an inherent part of the project. One of her key roles on the team is to represent the interests of these countries and their artists and to connect others with experts in the arts and cultural sector in these countries. So um, welcome Hera and uh, um, we look forward to hearing you talk. Hi everybody. Um, first of all, I just wanna say I'm, I'm very, very happy to be here. Um, this is uh, one of uh, the projects that we have um, supported through Transforming Narratives. And I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about Transforming Narratives as a project and then a little bit about the British Council. Um, uh, which is the organization that I'm representing. So, the Transform so Transforming Narratives is 
um, a project of a consortium of organizations. There's three main key organizations. Uh, one is uh, the British Council, of course, uh, which I'm representing. And then um, there's Arts Council England and there's Culture Central, which is based in West Midlands. Um, and so, um, as you can see, both uh, Arts Council England and uh, Culture Central are uh, based in the UK, right? Are UK organizations, but the British Council is, um, while it is a British organization, it is um, an extremely international organization. We operate in more than a hundred countries. Um, and the aim of the British Council, which I think, um, I think eludes a lot of people <laughs> um, because we do so many different things in so many different countries, um, is that, I mean, ultimately, I think if I were to sum it up, um, is essentially to, uh, you know, promote a wider knowledge of the United, United Kingdom and English language that, is, that was sort of like the, the, the sort of, you know, sort of older aim really. But now what it's really become is, you know, providing international opportunities and connections uh, in places where we operate. And I think there's no better example than, than our work with Transforming Narratives where um, we are the only organization that's part of that consortium, which, which brings the perspective, the expertise, um, and the interests um, of two different countries on this project. So Transforming Narratives covers um, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and Birmingham, UK. And so, um, so, that's, so that's what we do. Um, what we are uh, helping do it with Transforming Narratives is um, the goal really of the project is quite, is quite lofty. Um, and the project ends in 2022 and there's various strands. So, Currently, um, this particular project, uh, by Green Projects, is um, uh, supported under our digital collaboration grants, which were a response to COVID-19. Um, we were due to go ahead with like a regular open call, which is how we've been supporting other projects. And then COVID-19 happened and we basically adapted our entire sort of approach. Um, and we felt like we needed to support artists in this time to make sure that art was continuing to be created um, you know, in these three countries, in these three sort of regions that we, that, that are sort of our, uh, you know, within our purview. And um, so to sort of make that happen, we designed um, the, these digital collaborations um, as something that, that we could do. And um, we're really proud to support uh, 17 different projects that are operating uh, currently and are due to wrap up, I think, um, by the end of the year and by the end of January now, uh, 2021. So, Green projects. Uh, this particular project that you're, you know, sort of uh, seeing right now, this wonderful collaboration between three different organizations from three very different parts of the world that are, you know, that have come together because of a passion for uh, a, a similar art form, um, is what we're seeing here. And I'm very, very happy to be here, um, and I'm really happy to see this sort of three-way collaboration, which is very unique, um, and uh, really looking forward to the work. Is that good, Nicola? Would you like me to add anything else? Oh, that's great. Thank you. That was really informative and so good to see you here. Um, I'm sure there might be some questions for you that land in the chat box. So um, let's keep an eye on that. And, um, and um, thank you again. Um, Absolutely. Happy to respond to anything. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, so I'd now uh, like to hand over to um, Rabania to introduce um, one of the project partners, uh, Taswegaha. Thanks, Rabania. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, I'm Rabania, and I'm the founder of Taswegaha. Um, uh, Taswegaha is basically uh, based in Lahore, Pakistan, and um, I started this in 2015. And still, it's the Pakistan's um, only space that is dedicated entirely to photography. Um, next. Uh, the purpose of starting this video was to build up a community of photographers. So we immediately started doing um, photo talks, art talk, artist talks, screenings. We would do book launches. We would uh, do events and activities that would bring photographers together. Uh, next. In 2017, we started an annual residency program and we um, 
opened up our space for uh, artists. We accommodated them. We provided them kitchens and meals and gave them poet, uh, events like poetry recitals and therapies and opened and gave them studios and working spaces. Um, and these, this residency program is usually 10 to 12 days long and all the artists work together, they interact, they exchange ideas. And the purpose of this residency is to um, kind of bring people together, but also develop new ideas, uh, bring in new narratives. Next. Uh, so the physical space is um, an inspiration for people um, in Lahore, especially, uh, and for people who uh, come to the space uh, during the residency programs, uh, because the space is uh, de designed in an old traditional way. It has big uh, windows and uh, for natural light. It has big studio spaces. So and the physical space is open for the public. Next. Um, in because of the COVID, we uh, closed our uh, space for the residency and the events. Uh, we um, thought of developing um, a, a, a library of uh, photo books and uh, research papers and journals and photo magazines. Uh, basically, the purpose is to develop a, an understanding about the medium uh, through education. In 2000, uh, in 2021, we will be looking forward to um, new projects like a YouTube series will be, which will be like a mini festival. Um, every month will be dedicated to a different genre of photography. Um, other than that, we will be broadening the whole um, whole vision of the speaker. We will be working on projects like archiving and um, interviewing uh, photographers. So yeah, that's it for us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rabania. And um, I should say, because I was reminded by that wonderful image that uh, we met through um, Mariam Wahid, and um, that came about because of transforming narratives and yeah. the visit she was able to make to yeah. Uh, to Pakistan uh, last year, wasn't it? Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so um, I'd now like to um, hand over to our other project partner and Hi. over to uh, Topu at the uh, Pashala Institute. Hi, hi. Hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining us today. Uh, my name is Tanvir Murat Topu. I'm the head of photography of Parshala South Asian Media Institute. Uh, this school started uh, 22 years back uh, in a small room and eventually it grows uh, in a bigger way and in very you know uh, organic way. We call it like uh, it's artist run school. We want to say it because we take our own decisions, what we wanted to do or what we want not to do. Uh, if you see our logo, it's a uh, very big banyan tree that is uh, very old school and uh, it's a process that school without walls uh, in the south subcontinent, it, it has that meaning. So we started from there, uh, though we have many walls right now, but we always said that uh, you have to free your soul uh, to be free. It's not about the wall around. So you have to be free uh, by your soul. So uh, that's the starting. Our journey began at 1998. Uh, we have two departments right now, uh, photography, film, and television. Our founder was Dr. Shoydul Alam. Uh, now he's the trust chairman. Uh, Mr. Harun is now acting principal. We have recently affiliated the University of Dhaka. We started a graduation program of 128 credit. Uh, it's a full-fledged honors in photography. Uh, and also we have uh, affiliation with Sunderland University, ABU, AIBD. Uh, and uh, we have la lots of partner we working with. Uh, that's uh, where we started. Uh, though we don't have any banyan tree, but we have, we had a mango tree, uh, a huge mango tree and 
Uh, literally, we have class under the tree. Uh, sometimes you see the students are editing their work with teachers. It's, it's open space before, uh, though the tree is not here uh, now. Uh, we are making a new building there uh, and we are moving there very soon. Uh, but uh, that was our core idea uh, about the school and how you uh, make classes or sharing your knowledge to student. And uh, it's always sharing. It's not one way education or teaching. We always said that uh, it's a very organic school and we will share our ideas within uh, the students and teachers. So that's the triangle we use uh, as a work like media education and culture. We have three organization. We have like sister concern, like uh, media is uh, around with Drick, Drick Picture Library. This is one of uh, our sister concern. Education part is uh, organized by Patshala South Asian Media Institute. Uh, and the culture is Chobi Mela. So when Drick and Patshala jointly organize, it's, it's, a, it's the culture they wanted to make. It's called Chobi Mela Festival of Photography. We are running Chobi Mela uh, from last 20 years. So it is the longest running photo festival in South Asia. And we are the first who we started at uh, in this region. So that's how we work. So we wanted to work in media. We wanted to work in education. And through that, we wanted to make a new culture or visual culture to the society that is very absent in uh, the regular academic program in our country. So we wanted to introduce that culture into the society. So that's the uh, room that uh, we started our school at. Uh, so uh, the person is talking with his hand and uh, with emotion is Shredul Alam, who was the founder. And because of him, we are still uh, you know, exploring the world of photography and visual culture. So uh, in the evolved way, we started to work with many organizations like Walpress Photo and then University of Sunderland, University of Bolton. And we started collaborating program with uh, Oslomet, uh, is Oslo Metropolitan University. And that's the longest running uh, partnership of us with Pachtala and Oslomet. It's like 18 years we are having an international program uh, with Norway. Norway. And every year we have like international program in uh, third country, not in Dhaka or in Oslo, like uh, sometimes in Nepal, sometimes it's in China, uh, sometimes in Egypt. So we always have that knack to you know, build uh, a network within our periphery, not only for us or uh, our partner, but we also wanted to go from a, another perspective to add, uh, a, start a link with another uh, organization so that we have a, strengthen our network within this uh, area or geographic location. Uh, that's, that was the beautiful mango tree we had. We used to have like, I, I said it, it's very organic uh, school. So it's more like we have, uh, we have class throughout the day, but uh, without the class we have, it's called Adda or chit chat. We have like all day long, we fight, we quarrel, uh, we uh, starting making friends, uh, we, uh, but outside the class, teachers are not teachers, they're our friends, so we started making that. I am very proud of this school because I was as a student of this school. Then I started to teaching, I'm, I am the head of department. So all the teachers without only two, without two teachers, all the teachers are from the same school. So we basically shared a common dream uh, and that's, where the school stand for. The school show us to, you know, to see the dream and uh, to, uh, you know, to complete it. So that's, that's the important of this school, we think. So we have uh, different kinds of courses uh, through the, throughout the year. We have like short courses from basic to foundation. It's for very, uh, those who wanted to start photography uh, because we think it's very important to go to the common people. It's not about only few uh, devotees about photography, uh, but also we need to go back to the people who wanted to build that network, who, who was basically came to the serious courses or they wanted to uh, make new, uh, new kind of thing, or they wanted to come to the 
you know, regular programs like uh, presentation or exhibition or book show. So those we have all around the year. So we have two uh, serious program that is one is BSS program in photography and another one is uh, one year pro program in photography. So uh, the one year photography program who is eventually makes three years program uh, is the longest running program of Patshala. That's where Patshala started as for serious photography education. Uh, then now we started the BSS program with Dhaka University affiliation. So these are the partners we have right now, the Griffith University, RMIT from Australia, NID from India, uh, uh, Edith Cowan University, uh, uh, Hanover School, Danish School of Media and Journalism, Myanmar Data, uh, there's two missing, Seven is one of our important partner and Photo Circle from uh, Nepal is one of our important partner uh, uh, within this area. So we started, whole year with this uh, partnership and also run our basic uh, photography programs and other school, other programs, serious programs. And uh, we, we basically on our own, we uh, have the financial things from, uh, from these small courses or long courses. And we wanted to invest those things into uh, the program that we wanted to really do like exhibitions or bookmaking project uh, or uh, program like that. For journalists, we have like uh, this kind of uh, programs. So that's uh, the small version of us uh, in, uh, in one uh, international photography day. We have like a, a small group. That's a small group to us. Uh, those who are in UK, they don't understand. <laughs> But this is basically a small group of partial. If it is huge, it's like a you know <laughs> gigantic crowd uh, we can make. Uh, so that's it from Parchala. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Topi. And um, I should say, in, in addition to that array of logos that you just showed, I actually met you at Coventry a number of years ago at the yeah. university <laughs> there, introduced by. Jonathan Shaw and Caroline Malloy, who I think is on this call in this meeting. Yes. So, yeah. Small world. Here. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's been really inspiring for us to have such great partners um, in uh, the Poshala Institute and Taswir Gaha. So thank you so much, Rabania and Topu. Um, and um, we really hope we can build on this experience. And we're now going to hand over to um, the four artists, um, photographers that were awarded the opportunity uh, to work on this uh, project, starting with Nailupa. Hi, Nailupa. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you, Nicola. Um, my name is Nilupa Yasmin, and I am an artist and educator based in Birmingham. Um, I work as a visual arts educator as well as a lecturer in photography. So aside from my fine art practice, I'm really keen and interested in the educational um, side of art. Um, my practice is um, primarily based around photography. I do dabble into a lot of many other mediums, but mostly photography is kind of my core and what I start off doing a lot of my work with. Um, I wanted to share with you um, two small projects before moving on to like an overview of my practice. Um, this uh, series of work called Grow Me a Water Lily um, was about my own idea of belonging and it started off allowing me to work within the ideas of what representation meant to me but also how it allowed conversations for other people who felt the same way I did regarding certain issues around our own culture, our background, our religious beliefs. Um, a lot of my work is very self-portraiture based. Um, I feel like when I'm making such statements about representation, it's not um, a, broad straight, a, broad, a broad statement in representing everyone, but just this minority sector of us who do feel in this way. And using myself as the main subject, um, one of the main reasons behind that is because I do solely believe that I am the subject I know best. And it's something that I feel I can play around with when using in my um, photographic practice. 
Um, I'm also very keen and interested in the way gender roles play in society. So uh, one of my recent bodies of work, Fuldani, um, explored the ideas of how women are seen in our culture and society and the way the environment almost nurtures women to see themselves. And as well as this, um, as well as the themes of gender, I'm very interested in the way photographs can be manipulated because of the way that the images are constantly changing in the photographic world. Um, you can see this in the images that I've created here where I often cut into my images and I find that it's something that's always been quite interesting in terms of how the photographic materiality has almost <laughs> overall. Um, I think one of the things that I found really interesting with this specific body of work was to allow me in terms of showing others what photography can become because my work is very much about the different kind of photography that there is out there. So aside from um, making images, I'm always constantly doing something extra to my images and crafts and installation based work is something that's been quite prominent within my practice. I have a family history of weaving. So my great grandmother was a weaver, something I discovered throughout my degree um, in photography. And it's become a very important part of my practice, but also a part of the participatory and socially engaged work that I do with communities. Um, I'm often uh, seen doing a lot of installation based work that is um, quite large and quite immersive, but it's very important to me to have this kind of connection to the work that I'm making. So the images that you can see here are all photographs that have been woven together. Um, this piece of work was um, seen in Coventry and it was part of the Coventry's 2021 culture bid. And it was based around the area of Falls Hill. Um, this work was done in a participatory sense that I worked with the community, but was solely handmade by me. And I wanted to kind of include this to show you the range of installations that I often make when it comes to my woven pieces. And quite lastly, um, ending on this note of a lot of the workshops that I run. So I do a lot of visual arts works workshops around different mediums and different themes, but my weaving workshops are something that I want to say I'm known for, but also something that I thoroughly enjoy doing. I um, have done these workshops from five-year-olds to all the way to 75-year-olds. So it's been something that's quite special to me and quite important in terms of sharing a skill that I have to others. So as you can see in some of these images, I often do workshops where you'll see participants learning to weave my photographs, but also sharing the stories that we get from practicing something that's very hands-on. Um, I'm really interested in gender roles through craft and the arts and craft movement. A lot of my research is based around the way we associate certain forms of arts and craft movements to women because of the fact that we historically just date something like weaving to be done by women. So a lot of my research is um, heavily based around the theories of craft forms and gender roles. But yeah, that's a little bit about me. I tried to fit that in five minutes. So I'm really proud of myself, but thank you. Thanks, Nalupa. Um, and now handing over to uh, Samsul. Um, thanks, Samsul. Do you want to go ahead with your presentation? Uh, thank you, Nicola. Thanks all to join this session. My name is Samsul Alum Halal, working as a freelance visual artist based in Bangladesh. I have started photography at 2007. Later, I have complete three years photography program uh, from Patshala at 2012. Uh, my interest, um, I'm interested working on social issues and marginalized people in Bangladesh. I like to do stage photography and I like to make a fiction to question the reality. My aim is to go beyond the social, cultural, political issues. In my recent practice, I do photography, video, and installation. So I made one work uh, about uh, Love Studio. It's a, a Love Studio is a portrait series, portrait series of working class people in old Dhaka. So I arrange a studio for these people, and this studio represents their dream, hope, and desire. So that, that this basically I work on 
that area in old dhaka there is the industrial area there is a lot of uh, uh, labor living there so uh, i talk with these people and on street on 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 the restaurant and other places and then i invited them to came to my studio and then taking pictures so basically through my through my image i try to show their dream show their show their desire so what they like and it's a almost also it's like a performance how they like to see themselves but it's not like happened because they are most of this labor people living in countryside they came to dhaka with a big dream but the dream is never came so and so i uh, and then i i thought that i i made errands that is studio and and invited them they came to my studio and performance here so this the love studio work and i in installation and i uh, after my work i exhibited this work several places and during my exhibition i also installed the background and one mirror you can see that the mirror in the middle of the images and so that so i can feel that i can i thought that people can audience can get get more connected so i just try to during my exhibition i try to uh, like installation some object i made another work it's called ranwell lover uh, as we know that in south asia the main eastern society do not receive do not accept that inter religion relation so if anybody have the inter religion relation uh, uh, they run away their uh, run away their from their family run away from the society go to somewhere fighting to fighting to their love and live together and so i i have i have some i have some i have some friends who had uh, that kind of relation so i talk with them and i talk with them that how they how they survive so through my through my image i try to i try to make some symbolic images that that how this couple are living how this couple are fighting how the couple are under threat by the society so i make some you saw that uh, symbolic image with the burning flower and and the right side image is uh, voiding images next so the another image is like two pigeon in the in the cage so it's like a, they're in the locker because the, how they live in the society how they live in the city so it's a like a it's a like a, it's kind of a, so it's i try to make a symbolic image and and the right side image is so the another couple so it's a kind of a way to understand the understand the situation they do not show their faces in the in the society as there several several like thread in and also i installed i exhibited this work several places and during this exhibition i also put that uh, motion image burning flower with the monitor and put that another image with the install this exhibition and i made another work it's called disappearing roots disappearing roots talk about the indigenous community in bangladesh so Yes, as we know that uh, in recent time, it's like the big displacement happened every places in the indigenous community. In Bangladesh, also same thing. So, in my research, I I I found interesting element that how the how the displacement is start in Bangladesh in indigenous community. So, I found that one image is like in 1962. they made a handmade handmade lake uh, the kapta hydraulic uh, hydraulic project for that it like 100000 people displaced from that place and 40 to 50000 people went to india so you can see that the uh, left side images you can see there is a big <coughs> big house that house is chakma royal place house so uh, <coughs> from that from that image i made a uh, 
I made uh, I made a three D three D dummy chakmar wallpaper. So you can see that uh, right images here. So which is uh, I made uh, after that when I found that image, I made that the 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 um, dummy chakmar wallpaper dummy and and made an underwater video. So. Uh, so a lot of people we know that the Chakparwal place is still now under water. So I'm um, so I made this visual for that reason, and so I think this is work. And also I collected some sound from from their community, like how uh, when they when they use uh, they use some uh, f they use some flute sound for their funeral, and I collected sound from also the waterfalls. I also collected sound from when they are playing at evening, and I put also the sound here. And I also made a one chair, which is uh, I took the reference from the Chakma, Chakma throne, uh, Chakma throne, and then I saw. So under my my thought is like the, the everything is now is going underwater, the, but the chair is traveling in the hill tracks and searching the people who are still alive. And so the displacement happened from the 1962 still is going on several way. So that time it's happened by the maid of Kaptai hydroelectric project, but now it's going on several way. And so I made that some of images symbolic way that how, why they do not show their faces. And you can see that last image of the natural flower and the plastic flower. So as an understanding for the symbolic way to understand that the natural flower is dying and the plastic flower is shining. So this way, go to the next please. And also symbolic way to show the, the red cloth is burning. So, you know, the, in, the, in the hill tracks, we several times we saw that there's, there's a conflict happen in the hill tracks with the indigenous community and others and um, Bengali settler people. So symbolic way, I'm just, I'm just, uh, just making these images and the right side images, you can see the couple is standing. And I installed this exhibition during that, uh, during that uh, exhibition, I also put the chair and the video sound and also the photograph. So this is my, uh, short presentation. Thank you all for listening to me. Thank you so much, Samsol. And I'm just now handing over to Walid, who's uh, based in um, Lahore in Pakistan. Hi, Walid. Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Walid Zafar. I'm a Lahore-based visual artist. Um, I've been working as a visual artist for quite some time now. I graduated from Beacon of National Institute in 2017, which uh, is the institute that I'm working at. So I've been working as a visual artist and as well as an art educator. Um, I'm, I primarily uh, teach art history and I approach art from a more theoretical perspective and history is um, something that always plays a role in that. Um, so I've been working with, uh, so I consider myself as a multidisciplinary artist and I, uh, my practice is primarily idea led, but there are certain themes uh, and genres that I navigate. Um, this particular work, I titled it Color and it uh, talks, uh, and this was displayed um, at the Indian Art Fair um, this year at the start of 2020 in January. Um, so basically the my work, uh, photography takes an integral role in in the production of my work, be it photography that I have worked with or, or I have taken, or be it photography that um, or that has been collected or has, has been a part of like books or uh, basically. Um, so yeah. So this particular work was basically a comment on identity and particularly in terms of uh, expression, uh, uh, sexual identity as well, um, and it's form one part of my practice. Um, and can you go to the next slide? Um, so I've been working uh, both uh, through photography and as well performatively. This particular work was part of my thesis in 2017, um, where me and, a, and, a, and an artist that I was collaborating with worked 
uh, on the performative video of across Lahore, um, as a way of navigating um, the stigma of, of uh, relationships between or heterosexual relationships between uh, or, or contacts between men and women in Pakistan. And that kind of talked about, uh, talked about larger concerns of being safe in a public space with social stigma and taboos related to society. Um, and so the, my work has generally been very much related to like South Asian identity um, and where, where I come from. Uh, and it navigates from historical identity to you know, more contemporary identity. And I keep thinking of myself as more of uh, an anthropologist or a kind of navigate between art and anthropology. Um, and that is something that really inter intrigues me um, looking back and reflecting on society through these visual documents. Um, can we move forward? So I've recently I've been working a lot with the idea of racial identity or race uh, as you know the pre pre uh, as like you know the very like sub or objective uh, part of identity and how it's made. Um, these particular images were taken from ethnographic documents and they are manipulated and they are. Uh, then they are dissected in some way or the other. And it talks much larger about um, post-colonial structure uh, in terms of identity. Uh, and, and it feeds into that historical perspective. Um, so my work has generally been, um, has been very like, it, it, has, it has multiple streams of thought uh, and this particular work is one of them. Um, can we move forward? And, and, and on the other hand, during this particular time period, I, uh, during COVID, I, when I've been situating myself inside or at, at, and at home, I've been working with photo photography and photographing myself and also exploring uh, my own personal identity through home and through home and through objects and in, in relation and, in, and them being in relation to me. And I feel these particular works kind of also fed into the exchange that I've had with Tanya as well. Um, and that kind of connected uh, my practice to this particular exchange. Um, and so we've been working quite closely together. Um, and so, yeah, so I, I've actually kept my presentation really, really brief because of the five minute thing, I didn't add a lot of my work, but generally I'm, I, my, I've been, uh, the, my larger body of work have revolved around certain issues of, of identity and of seeing yourself in a post-colonial uh, nation and kind of navigating through uh, the kind of systems that are in place, the structures that are in place here. So be it politics at home, politics on the street, uh, power structure, all of these things have been a point of interest for me and they have led to my practice. Um, and yeah, so this is, uh, this is generally the overview of my practice. Thank you so much, Waleed, and thank you for keeping that so brief as well. Um, no so um, I'd now like to introduce you to Tanya. Tanya is um, an artist and photographer based um, here in Birmingham. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Nicola. Hi, everybody. So um, my name is Tanya, and um, I'm a multidisciplinary artist based in Birmingham. Um, yeah. I graduated in fine art, but I've always had a keen interest in like fine art photography, video work, as well as digital manipulation, which I think you'll see in some of the projects that I'm going to present to you guys. My practice explores issues around identity, especially misconceptions about aspects of my identity, as well as looking at family ideas of home and the complexity of religion. I think the reason that I'm really um, particularly interested in these aspects is because of my own upbringing and experiences. So my parents are from a small village in Pakistan, and they migrated to Birmingham in the late 80s. They settled in a predominantly South Asian area. So this is kind of all that I really knew when I was growing up. A lot of the kids that I went to school with, for example, were South Asian. The shops that we shopped at were owned by South Asian families. And it's only when I grew older and had more real life experiences, I became more aware of how I was a minority. And I became quite self-conscious and self-aware about this. So I started to steer towards more, more of my Western um, experiences and part of my identity. It was on my second trip to Pakistan when I was about 19 years old. That these ideas started to fade and I became and I learned how to embrace my culture a lot more and I realized that um, a lot of the experiences that I had of my culture were quite westernized by me living in Birmingham and then the series that I did which was called Pakistan's in the Bar um, 
It was a collection of images that I took during my time there. And I wanted to show the side of Pakistan that I saw while I was there, which was of it in its all its beauty and its glory as well. Um, when we came back from Pakistan, I started to think about, even though I learned what, a lot while I was there, um, I did stick out like a sore thumb as well. So when we went to the markets, for example, a lot of people could tell I wasn't actually from the village, that I must have been from somewhere else. And this was through like the way I was speaking. So even though I can understand my mother tongue, I'm not very fluent in speaking it. So I tried to not say a lot while I was there. But it made me think about um, my parents' migration story and how difficult it must have been for them because when they first came over to the UK, coming to a place where they didn't speak the language, they didn't really understand the culture, and it was something completely different. Yeah, Mary Gurha, which translates to this is my home, was an exploration of these ideas of home and how we make a home a home. And this in particular looked at my mother's migration story and looked at how she used a lot of familiar places. So, you know, by being able to settle in a South Asian area and um, artifacts like, you know, she, had a, she wore a lot of traditional clothing and even till this day as well, she doesn't really wear anything that's sort of Western. She always wears a lot of traditional clothing and being able to live near her family as well was able, enabled her to create a new sense of home. Um, as I mentioned before as well, I'm really interested in the complexity of religion and I think being a young Muslim woman, there's a lot of misconceptions about Muslim women in Islam and our place in Islam and one particular aspect is always the hijab, it's always a talking point. And um, the hijab and I was an exploration of the different viewpoints of the hijab, so I was looking at the contemporary understanding of the hijab, which is a scarf done by Muslim women, and I talked to a lot of them. Um, my friends that wore the hijab asked them about their experiences, you know, the particular reason that they wore the hijab. And what I gained from that was that for them, it is a symbol of modesty, a symbol of faith. And it's the choice as well, isn't it, that they're forced to wear. Whereas it's painted by the Western media as a symbol of oppression. So this project was really looking at these conflicting opinions and trying to bring them together to conclude that no matter what opinions that we may have, for Muslim women, it's always going to be about their choice in the end. And um, the last project that I'm going to talk about is Surah Nur Ayah 30 to 31. And this was a continuation of um, the hijab and I. And this project was more about the historical understanding of the hijab, because I think even being, even though I am Muslim, there's a lot of aspects of my religion that I don't really know and I don't really understand. And I'm always, through my work especially, trying to learn about these and educate other people about these as well. And from doing this project, I learned that the historical understanding of the hijab is something completely different to what we know today. When it first is talked about in the Quran, which is during this surah, which is during Surah Nur in Ayah 30 to 31, it's talked at as being a divider between the public and private space. And in the contemporary understanding about Muslim women being able to use it as something that's a public and private space, you know, keeping parts of their body private and parts of their body public as well. So through this work, I kind of wanted to explore that a little bit more and hopefully aim to educate my audience about that, as well as educating myself as well. Um, I'm gonna stop it there, because like I said, I wanted to kind of keep it short and brief as well, but I hope that's kind of given you guys a little bit more insight into my practice. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. So everybody, as everybody can probably see, um, we've uh, been able to work with four um, really talented and fantastic artists through this process. Um, I should probably say at this moment, um, we had some really interesting and uh, fantastic applications for this opportunity. And um, the four that were awarded were um, selected based upon application by ourselves and uh, Pathshala and um, um, also by Rabania. Um, and so um, the four artists have really looked at photography in um, looking at identity and heritage and diversity in place and post-colonialism in a really interesting and sort of contemporary ways. And we're now going to move on to the exchange itself and to hear from um, Nailupa and Sam Saul about um, the ideas they've been sharing and how they've worked collaboratively to make new work. Thank you, Nicola. <laughs> Thanks again to all for listening long time. <laughs> Me and Nilupa, we are working together and produce a work. For this work, we selected few words are from our conversation and photographs, uh, photographs on urban escape. And from photographs and from our words, we transform it to a new metaphoric form. Uh, I have selected few words such as 
control system surveillance uh, space. Uh, so these few words came to my mind that how the state control and monitoring us. Uh, sometimes it's feel like a, a, we, are, we are living in a surveillance state. So this is my thought. So that that way I'm selected few words from from my recent experience and from our conversation. I like to hand over to Nilupa to she can talk about her perspective and show our work. Thank you. Thank you, Shamsul. Um, so as, as Shamsul just mentioned, we did, we had a lot of conversations about conversations and about the society around us, the environment around us. And I think in, in the start, we were just getting to know each other, getting to know each other's practice. And we didn't really think that that was what we would end up making work about in some way. So originally, um, after having like weeks and weeks of conversation, we realized that we had no photographs to show for anything or just just no work that we had made. So I think we we kind of stuck to this idea of cityscape and nature, and especially uh, with Chamsel in Dhaka and me in, uh, me in Birmingham, it was quite different the environment that was around us, especially the fact that, you know, we were both in lockdown at the time and it's the different kind of environments that we could see around us. So what I did was I went out and I photographed around Birmingham Town Centre and I think cityscape and nature was something that Shamsul was quite interested in, in terms of the um, the narrative behind the work, but also the contrast that you get from the images. So these are some of the images that I ended up taking just around city centre. There was I don't think I had an intention behind what I wanted the images to look like, but it was more just getting out there and starting to take photographs. Um, we, when we got, um, when we moved on, we, I, Chamsul did the same in Dhaka, so he took a lot of images of the city um, space there, but also a lot of rural and urban spaces around Dhaka. And we kind of got to a point where we had all these images, but we just didn't know what we wanted to do with the images. And we played we played around with them a lot. We experimented a lot. Some of it worked, some of it did a, some of it was just quite, it, it didn't, it didn't do what we wanted to, but it looked in a way, so it, it looked well and it looked well done, but it just didn't do anything for either one of us. And we kind of felt like it wasn't doing justice to the conversations we were having. Um, we then later on kind of got to this point where we realized that, you know what, we've been having so many conversations about the environment, about society, about culture. I mean, we're recommending each other books and quotes and just, just having these kind of um, conversations that almost critiqued the world that we live in. So why not use the words that we're talking about and the language that is around us and because both me and Chamsun have the common tongue of Bangla and it's one that we both connected to really well we started to think about the way the Bangla language has formed and the way the language has almost developed through society through culture through the people that live in Bangladesh but also all around the world so um what we did was um, we kind of started to combine both his images and my images together and started to form these words out of the images that we were creating. And it, it became this kind of experiment form, but later we realized that it was the best way to kind of almost articulate what our project had become and what our project was essentially about. And the kind of process of um, putting images together was quite important because it was it was still this idea of nature and it was landscape but again it, it kind of it was whole roundedly about our environment and society as a whole so um we we kind of got to a point where we didn't know what kind of words we wanted to choose in terms of making these pieces and when I say words I mean we just generally just picked out describing words um from in Bangla and created these pieces out of them and initially, I, I think I, I wanted specific, I was choosing specific words that were very patriotic and very, um, very historic about Bangladesh, but also had this connection to um, the history and the politics, but also the way the countries evolved. And I think that came very much from my experience about wanting to know so much more. But with Shamsul, a lot of the words he was choosing were about the environment that he was in currently. So words like surveillance, words like control, whereas the words that I, would I was choosing was like patriotic and independent. So it was quite interesting to see that contrast, but also how our thoughts and processes throughout the project almost outlaid into the work. 
um, initially what we did was um, got these words and almost created these digital formations from them. And I think it was one of the things that Shamsul picked up on a lot was the fact that, you know, it's metaphorically, we're almost making the word again. Um, and I think for us, we got to a point where we realized that a lot of the words that we did choose in a way, they have these preconceived notions about what they mean. So for someone who reads the word system, it can mean something different to what I consider system to be, especially living in Britain, what does system mean to me as opposed to Shamsul living in Dhaka and what system means to him. Um, again, it became one of those things where we started thinking about, you know, how the different words kind of controlled us, but also how we connected to the words differently. So there were certain words that Shamsul chose that I didn't necessarily connect with in the same way. However, I understood why he was picking those words out. So like words like space and words like surveillance, they, they mattered to him and to the environment he was in. But at the same time, um, we got to a point where I was really interested in um, the history of Bangladesh and this kind of, I think we had a lot of conversations at one point about um, the British Raj and colonialism and how, how that affected the way the country almost shaped itself, but also um, very much about like the so social construct around us and how if you don't change the culture, how are you expecting, if you're not going to change the culture around you, how do you expect a real change to come about? So a lot of the words that we did choose had some kind of significant meaning to us, but we were very adamant that we're moving away from this preconceived idea that we have because a lot of the words can have very hurtful meanings to different people of different age group. So something like the word government can mean something completely different to me as a 25 year old, but also to someone who is 55 or 75 or even 95. And it's this idea of how, depending on our life experiences, we connect to different words in different ways. And I think in a way, this kind of became this accumulation of all the words that we had conversations around, but also we didn't want to kind of keep it strict in any way. So we ended up with this kind of accumulation of all the words, but also how, how we can potentially see the work in the future. I know a lot of the images that we were making kind of reminded either one of us of different spaces, of different times, um, of the culture that's around us. So it, it, I think the main kind of prospect of the work was this idea of transforming what words mean to us and essentially how our conversations became these almost very pretty looking pieces, but that can also have this meaning where the words that were associated with them can have very hurtful feelings. So if it was a specific word that was patriarchal can have this negative implication, but it's become something so pretty. The same way something like surveillance is um, a moment that Shamsul was feeling at the time where the environment around him had changed, but yet, you know, we made this pretty work out of it. So I think it, it's kind of been, it's, it's been a nice journey to see the work evolve. And I don't think neither of us had seen the work look this way. So that's been really interesting for both of us. But at the same time, um, I think we really did enjoy working within the words and working with the language, because I think that was something that connected us. So in a way, I felt like it became this whole rounded circle where we got back to where we first started from. But yeah, that's a bit about the work that we created and, um, yeah, thank you for listening. Thanks, Nelly from Samsung. That's been really insightful. And thank you for drawing out some of those key themes in your work and working practices as well. Um, it's been really fascinating to see the sort of partnership evolve. Um, so now handing over to Tanya and Walid. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, okay. So Tanya and I have been working together um, on our exchange and like Nilipa said, we, for the first like couple of weeks, we just had like these long conversations about uh, our work and our ideas uh, and kind of, you know, map like certain thematic concerns uh, when it came to the work. Um, so we kind of, I kind of mapped them out through this like, you know, mind map that kind of talked about certain like ideas that led to it. So we started out with identity because again, Tanya being from a Pakistani background and me living in Lahore, we kind of thought that the, the connection between uh, like the, that cultural connection was there. Um, but then again, our experiences are quite different. Uh, Tanya being a diasporic Pakistani artist while me living in Pakistan. That kind of, uh, but again, even if we can came back to Pakistan, I think Tanya would be able to articulate it better. 
she if to come from a different uh, background being in, in from pakistan than i do um so that also is like add another layer of experience to this particular exchange um and it can, you can add with whenever you want to add something anya yeah uh, no so i just don't want to interrupt when you're talking but yeah as we need explained he's actually from a big city whereas my family are from a small village and i think during our exchange we realized that that's a, this was actually quite important because our ideas of community were quite different as well because i was thinking about community on sort of not a micro scale about about but about like bringing people together whereas he was thinking about community in the big sense because part of pakistan where he's living in currently has a lot of urbanization whereas the part of pakistan that i was um exposed to was very different there wasn't a lot of um, urbanization there it was about a lot of people that knew each, um, each other is about a small community as well about bringing people together and i think this idea of community was sort of our main theme that we kind of wanted to run with with really looking a lot at like the large community in the larger sense which we'll see later in as well whereas i was looking at community in a micro sense through food so um some of the work that we started to create quite early on we were looking at doing um a live cook along and this was like i said through ideas of food and one of the most interesting things that really said to me because the recipe that that's actually on screen now was a recipe of his mother's and the recipe that i would traditionally use to make this item which was vegetable before was completely different and he actually said that oh i hope you can find the um, ingredients in the uk and it wasn't something that i kind of initially always thought about because when i was living at home so i've currently moved away from when i was living at home accessibility wasn't a problem i always lived somewhere near where i could get anything that i needed but living sort of more in the city center it's actually quite hard to get these ingredients and when i was going around i found that the one ingredient that i needed which was coriander was one of the hardest thing to find and i know we're going through a lockdown and stuff and there'd been a lot of food shortages in the beginning when we went through our first lockdown as well i didn't realize that there was a world shortage of coriander but it's like a staple ingredient within pakistani cooking as well but this during this cook along we not only made the food together but we had conversations about our identity and about food as well and then Willie talked a lot about how actually he doesn't cook a lot he's more of a baker whereas I'm the complete opposite I enjoy cooking and I think something that Nilupa mentioned about gender roles as well it's something that you think about within sort of the Pakistani community women are sort of not grown to cook but it's something that we something that we do but it's something that I've always enjoyed as well and um, when we started to Oops, sorry when we started to talk more about the work we kind of wanted to make together as well um oh, no the next page Stephen. um we did similarly to what kind of the loop and shamsa did as well we started sharing work amongst ourselves so i started to ask Walid for pictures that talked about the marketplace because when i was in pakistan that's something that I quite vividly remember that was quite important for food as well was the marketplace it was the only place that you could actually get any of the ingredients that you needed and one of the most vivid memories i had was we went somewhere to get meat and here you're used to like a butcher's where all the animals are already killed and you just have to pick what you want we went to the small butchers there was live chickens in a cage and my mom was like yeah we just want this much chicken and i remember the guy pulling out the chicken and she didn't warn me at all about what was going to happen she pulled, pulled out the chicken cut it in front of me all the blood took all the um like the not leaves i don't know what they're called like all the hair of the chicken as well I was like here you go and it was just it was something that was so vivid to me and i know we don't have the sort of same experience here so the picture on the left was sort of like a marketplace then it was quite interesting to see that even though that image was in lockdown um while we were in lockdown there was a lot of people in pakistan that were still going on about their day-to-day -day lives and the image on the right was some um homemade home spices that we'd had so this is something that was i was quite interested about was there's a lot of um especially now in the uk a lot of brands like ktc that have a lot of spices that you'll be able to get in pakistan that are pre-made and have a lot of recipes on them as well they're not fresh ingredients anymore and i didn't know whether in pakistan they have something that's the equivalent and they do which i was quite shocked about but these products actually you can only get them in pakistan so i thought that was quite interesting as well and then through the images um he sent to me i like what i like to do first is sort of like collage images together with images that i taken as well just to kind of get my ideas going so the image on the left was the image that he sent me of the spices but i wanted to add my own style to it like the style as i'm as an artist which i was able to do this work the image on the top right i combined the spices that i found here with sort of like high um the raw image that he sent me of these people sort of just talking and walking and the bottom image i don't know whether you can tell but um he's got his jacket edited to have like a ktc um brand on it i think that was quite poignant as well and then i'm just going to hand over to Walid and he'll talk about the images that we both shared as well 
So, uh, so Tanya and I took our perspective of change was that we were exchanging photography. We were exchanging pictures with one another. And like she said, uh, her view of community was more micro while I was looking at urbanization and communal development at on a macro level. So the image on the left, is some, uh, these images are something that Tanya had sent, sent to me from Birmingham. And, uh, and they were, I, I found them quite interesting because the character of these objects that were that are there um, was in, in some way exciting to look at because again, they, it, it, it is debtors, it is rubbish. But then, you know, the, where, does, where does that rubbish lead to? We talk a lot about ecology and like the human footprint on the planet. And, you know, these objects and these waste material are uh, also a legacy or a repository of that information of, of that time. So I will find also photograph photographing similarly. Um, and I was, yeah, so I was also photographing. So these are images that I had taken uh, around my uh, like uh, society. The part Lahore has gone through a very rapid phase of urbanization with new uh, societies and new like gated communities cropping up private on private land uh, owned by private companies and corporations. Um, and that development also kind of led to this exclusion of certain class structure, which I was also looking at. So again, I went through I went through this whole process of photographing certain things um, that were remnants of you know the development that was happening here, and I felt that that was an interesting kind of um, take on the mundane, but also kind of making it uh, talk about a lot more about a lot more about the human footprint of, of how society is developing. But then again, we, me and Tanya, were both photographing our own community. So she, so I, as she said, I photographed spices for her and we had a cook along while she kind of went around Birmingham to take her photograph for me of, you know, the, of, and that kind of repository of information or repository of photograph led to uh, a two way separate kind of project, but working on similar themes, um, working on similar themes. Yeah. And so I kind of, uh, in, in the work that I had been doing, I kind of, you know, tried to find that commonality. And then I used text to kind of, you know, really reinforce that narrative, uh, humanizing these objects in some way or the other, and also creating that link. Um, and also talking about humans on a more basic level as well, even though we are like, you know, we are in different time zones, but then, you know, the impact or the footprint that humans are leaving behind or and in terms of like the communities that we are building is uh, in somewhat similar. So here, the objects here, uh, or uh, these were only some, but the this, this series of works is kind of like finding those commonalities, making those connections, and then also uh, giving these particular objects a new identity as well. Uh, and again, and they become metaphors as well of urbanization. So yeah, so that this though me and I kind of had like again we went into different themes uh, when we were working, but then but we were talking about community or a communal identity in uh, in two different like binaries of macro and micro view, um, and yeah, so it was it has been very exciting to kind of you know look at that. Also kind of also think like, because again, Tanya being from a Pakistani diaspora, her uh, view or vantage point is quite interesting to also, you know, talk when we were talking and it was, it was exciting to share that experience with one another um, through food, through community, uh, through communal gathering. Um, and yeah, so, so this has been our work um, and we, we've had a lot of very exciting time to kind of produce it together. Um, so yeah, I think that this is the last slide. Um, yeah. So thank you. Thank you, four of you. That was fantastic to hear you present the work back to back like that. Just really, really really exciting thank you so much shall we give you all a round of applause i think <laughs> a muted round of applause there you go <laughs> um so 
the exchange process has been really rich and it's been very ideas led and it's been innovative and very open and you know it's just quite amazing isn't it what can be achieved over quite a short period of time because you know this is a short-term residency um it's literally a few months isn't it and also um you know online you know your what you have achieved has been on this platform pretty much um in terms of the conversations you've been having and you know what you've been sharing um so yeah that's pretty extraordinary i think um so as you know the four of you i have a, just a few questions that we wanted to ask just to tease out a few more of those themes and ideas and Please, if there's anyone in the audience that would like to ask any questions or make any comments, either uh, for the artists or for the organisations, please do um, pop them into the chat box. Um, so my first question was, um, when you sort of began the dialogue um, and the exchange, what were those first conversations like? What were the ideas that you shared? And I'd also like to hear about the challenges as well of the technology. I think that could be really interesting to hear. And that is over to any of the four of you. Um, so when we first started talking, me and Woody, we started talking about what we actually proposed to do for the exchange, just to kind of see whether A, the ideas were similar or B, we had any sort of similar themes. And we realized that, um, like we mentioned before, that we were both um, interested in this idea of community. And that's something that really came out through the work that we started to make me doing community through food and we lead looking at the urbanization and i think one something that again we've also already mentioned was that we were both interested in that even though we both had some sort of history with pakistan that we both had very different experiences and that how that related to the work that we made i don't think we had many um technical difficulties i think it was mainly just sort of the time zone thing because when we went did we go back an hour or forward an hour i can't remember just trying to work out then what our time scale was now. I think that's something that even now we still struggle with sometimes. But I think it was quite fortunate that during this lockdown, I was on furlough from work, so I was home. So I was a bit more free to be able to be like, yeah, earliest fine for me or latest fine for me. Obviously, we believe working a bit more. We kind of just kind of worked around each other's schedules. But I don't think necessarily there's a lot of difficulty with the technology. It was just the time zones so trying to get our head around those, really. Really, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, no, that's exa exactly how it is. And I feel like when we kind of started out, I, I, I think the first uh, thing we decided was to make this the collaborative part of it uh, and it's an integral kind of phone. So we kind of just started with, you know, sharing images via WhatsApp with one another. And that, even that was a really exciting kind of a thing. Like Shastanya will be sending me images one day and I'll be, you know, even like taking, you know, sending it to her and that kind of was an exciting part of the exchange as well to kind of just have a look at each other's perspective um and like you know where we are coming from to you know really gauge the context behind um of behind our community behind our identity um but we kind of tried to make the time zone thing a little like put that in the, in the back seat and just like you know make things much more accessible and you know and fun for each other to work with each other as well so yeah thank you i think with with me and shamsul we when we first started off instead of um speaking about what we initially proposed i think we just did like little mini artist talks for one another so we went through like each of our bodies of work and like what kind of interested one another and i think from that conversation we realized that we wanted to make a joint piece of work rather than two separate pieces and initially I intended um, to make completely different work and I wrote a completely different proposal to what we ended up making. Um, and, but it was quite interesting because I think we picked up on the fact that, you know, there were certain parts of my practice that he really liked, that he picked up on, and then it was the other way around as well. So I think that really helped in hone the idea that we did want to work collaboratively in like physically making a piece of work. Um, I think in terms of like one of the difficulties, and this one's really funny because um, because I weave a lot, Shamsul was really interested in me weaving his images or weaving our images together. And we tried that, it was one of those things we tried, but it just wasn't saying what we wanted it to. But also um, I started weaving before the second lockdown in England. 
So when, when I started, um, we got really into it and then we had second lockdown, so all the printers closed down. So that was kind of one of the unexpected things. But again, it was a technology-based um, residency. <clears throat> so, I mean, it was, it's, not, it's like the last thing you'd expect to happen. Um, so I think that was something that kind of did uh, mm. come up a lot. But in terms of kind of speaking about what was happening around the time, um, so it was a lot of uh, conversations about what was happening in the news in Bangladesh, what was happening in England um, around the time of, you know, conversations about is there going to be another lockdown? How long is this going to happen for? But also like different changing laws in and around, because I remember at one time we were really interested in, um, I think it was when the law about, um, I know this is completely going off topic, but um, it was the law about where rapists are going to be hanged. And I think I remember we had that conversation because um, it just came out in Bangladesh and we were like, oh, you know, and I remember Shamsul turning around and saying that, well, is, is that going to still stop rape from happening? And I think it was those conversations we were, happening, have, we were having between us around the time and what was happening in our day to day lives. I, I think this so we started we started our conversation sharing our back, background so we can we can understand each other more more detail so that helps us to make a new work like and also this is interesting to uh, we there's no no problem just only one thing at first we tried to another work Later on, when the second lockdown, then we moved on, shipped on this this project. So this is nice. There's there's no digital problem. Only one thing is like sometimes it's the digital skin is frozen. So this is the only the I feel it's only the same this problem. Otherwise, it's nice program. Thank you, Nicola, and thank you, Ben. Thank you, thank you, um, and. Just in terms of those conversations as well, um, you know, different lived experiences, different arts and photographic educations, different, um, well, slightly different career paths in some cases. So what fascinated you about each other's work? I'll start. Um, I, I think for me, I got quite lucky because um, I think after our before we even had our first meeting, I managed to get an artist talk that Shamsul did as part of um, an art summit. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but um, so I sat through that and I kind of heard his practice, how he would explain his practice to an outside audience. And I think that really benefited me in terms of seeing his whole rounded arts practice, but also the things that interested him a lot. And I think for me, I was, I was really um, keen to understand the way he had these kind of metaphorical ideas in his work. And I, I know he mentioned one of the ones that really, I remember writing this one down where he um, had the two lovers and the um, caged birds. And I think it's one of my favorites because it's this kind of um, symbolic reference behind how, you know, you can like compare two different things that are very different in nature, but at the same time, he had this connection between the works. Um, and again, it was the other, the flower burning one, that's one of my personal favorites where, you know, something so beautiful as flower is burning. And it's this kind of idea of how society is almost, in, in essence, just ruining everything. So I think it was little things like that, that I found really interested me in his work and made me want to make work with him rather than making the work alone. So I think that was something that I found um, was quite interesting. But also, um, I think a lot of his work uh, spoke a lot about how he kind of is trying to represent these um, different communities in Bangladesh that don't get a voice. And I found that really important because I, I often find that in, in mainstream art that we're making things that people want to see rather than trying to educate others about things that are almost hidden in um, spaces that aren't around us. So I think because of that, it was, it was just really interesting to see how he was taking his practice to almost better um, the conversations around these communities because it, it kind of developed these ideas of how his practice had almost formed in this kind of socially engaged aspect. And I think that's what interested me a lot about his practice, but also kind of made me realize that, is that something that I feel like I'm doing with my work? And if I am, how am I doing it? And I think from working with Shamsul a lot, I realized that when I say representation, I don't necessarily mean representing every British Bangladeshi Muslim woman out there. I mean, representing this minority of us that are part of this big circle of British Bangladeshi Muslim women. So I think it was just kind of having those conversations almost, 
in a weird way, they helped me define my own practice just by having the conversations with him and seeing how he works with his images. Thank you. That's a great answer. Um, I just wondered if either Tanya or Walid wanted to come on in on that question as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, sorry, really. Did you go ahead? Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, so yeah. for me, I was quite interested in the fact that mine and Waleed sort of like the way we kind of go about our work is very different, like visually as artists. But he has a lot of like interesting themes, and like he's mentioned before, his work is very ideal um, based, and that's the way that he's led. And he, he talks a lot about like societal and current issues that are affecting Pakistan in the present day, and the way that he then presents these issues through his photography. Something that quite interests me. I was when we first sort of um, were told that we were going to be working together, I had a look through his Instagram page. So I think you can tell a lot about some people that we um, talk through Instagram as well. And one of his images that really stood out to me was sort of like a digital collage that he did of these women by the river. And it talked about how the river was used as like power and control in Pakistan. And it wasn't about Pakistan it's, itself, it was about the people of Pakistan and the way that he's able to explore that through his work was something I found quite interesting because sometimes when we talk about you know, Bangladesh, Pakistan, we do look at just the um, environment, the landscape and that how that affects us. We don't always necessarily think about the people and how the environment and landscapes affects the people that live there. So that was something that I found quite interesting about his work. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think um, the thing that Anya kind of summed that up really well, I just add that, um, that the lens that Tanya brought through this exchange of looking at Pakistan from like, you know, that perspective, that was really important for me because again, uh, at me belonging to this particular context, it, it, it's a little harder to reflect on it. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that really, uh, that this exchange really helped me give some kind of insight and also about uh, her experience as a dia Pakistani diasporic artist um, living in the UK and that connection of, um, of his, and it, that, even that historical connection of colonization or colonial history, that was all, all of these things that we were navigating together. Um, and yeah, and so her, even her practice of like identity and uh, of, of being a Pakistani artist living in the UK, um, that also is again, a very contemporary kind of, um, uh, based on a, a lot of contemporary politics that is also being explored in Pakistan as well. So like, you know, thinking about um, the West or Western communities um, from that lens, um, again, it was really exciting for me. Uh, and yeah. Thank you, Ali. Thank you. I think I've got one eye on the clock and um, <laughs> I'm really aware we don't have too long left. Um, Stephen, can we have a quick look at the chat? chat and draw out a couple of questions thank you um we've got one from seb here about um she says really enjoyed all the presentations and artist works do the artists feel like these partnerships and collaborations will or could continue beyond this kind of initial initial project does anyone um Oh, sorry, Stephen. Um, I'd like to think so because one thing that I found quite interesting was I actually didn't know any artists or I've heard of many artists that were from Pakistan. So I've been able to talk to Waleed and look at his eye and his bird, like his view of Pakistan and be able to make work with him. It was actually quite interesting and it's sort of like as artists, I think when we make relationships, it's something that we do kind of want to keep forever as well because you know you never know, like two years down the line, you might be making a piece of work that was inspired by a conversation that you had two years ago. So I think this exchange has really opened doors for all of us. Well, I think especially for me and Willie as well. And it's been able to create conversations that hopefully will then continue in the future as well. Definitely. Would anyone else like to add? No? That's okay. Um, from Caroline, it's fascinating to hear the narratives around the work. Are there any plans to share the research process alongside of the work made? We are going to be in January, January uh, releasing a, a digital zine that people can print at home. So that will contain more conversations between the artists and the, uh, the work that's been produced. So everyone keep your 
eyes and ears out in January for, for that. Um, from Seb again, uh, this is for the organisations. Has this project strengthened ties between Birmingham, Birmingham, well, Gray, and uh, Birmingham artists and those in Pakistan, Bangladesh? This seems like a very important connection considering the number of Pakistani and Bangladeshi people living in the UK. I don't know if Nicola or Rabania or Topu, if you want to. Yeah, Rabania uh, first. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I think this has been a fantastic um, opportunity. Uh, just by putting out putting out the example, like um, I'm just very excited meeting uh, people from um, everywhere, uh, explaining that they have um, degrees in photography. And I think um, why this opportunity on so many levels is uh, is fascinating. Like in Pakistan, we don't really have a degree um, in photography. I was the only person who uh, took the degree and then the degree uh, was discontinued because that is the kind of, um, that is the kind of uh, uh, mindset that we have towards the medium. That is, uh, so I, I believe that this, um, this opportunity, this grant, this um, a project is uh, extremely important. Um, and I think uh, the speaker being a part of this, uh, I believe that it's very, very important for us also because it will give us a chance to um, expand um, not only towards the activities, but also towards education. So I, th I, I do believe that this is a very important connection. Right. I, uh, I think yeah I think it's very important it's always uh, from our part it's always important to build network because I think we think that uh, it's not only about you or yourself or your organization it's about the community so it's, it's uh, you know it's always important to have community around you and uh, make things together it's not only one part uh, our, our, it, it's important for everyone to make that opportunity and carry on the work. Uh, it, I think in that way, it's, it's this partnership will going to be interesting, uh, not only this way, but also next, how can we, uh, you know, having, uh, you know, sharing this network to a different level, not with without fundings. So it's always important to have sustainability around you and yourself, otherwise, uh, uh, it just means something, yeah. Yeah, and from our side of things, I think um, our main motivation in applying for this opportunity in the first instance was to sort of highlight and amplify the work of um, artists. And obviously in this case, artists who are based in Birmingham from Pakistani and Bangladeshi heritage. Um, that was building on work that we've been doing anyway for the last few years. And I know that Deb is in the audience, <laughs> Deb, Deborah Robinson from the New York Gallery Walsall, as well as Caroline, um, um, who's now at um, Farnham, previously at Coventry University. And um, it's with those two organizations that we previously worked with artists of color and we've been curating work, looking at themes, around identity and heritage and diaspora. And it's really, really important to our work because, well, not least because of the percentage of artists within Birmingham and the wider Midlands uh, that um, are from that Pakistani and Bangladeshi heritage, South Asian heritage, it's, it's significant and it's important. And so um, there's also networks within networks. It's really interesting how many people <laughs> having got to know Rabania and Topu pretty well, who, who else we know? Photography and visual arts is a small world, isn't it? And we're all connected in some way and I'm sure that will continue. Great. Um, and then we just have one last question, which is from Deb. Um, really fascinating dialogues. How were the artists matched with each other? Again, that might be for the organisations. So um, we um, led open calls uh, for the opportunities and, um, and then 
um, shared those um, submissions across the three organisations. And Stephen and I spoke to Rabania and Topu and one of Topu's colleagues as well to really sort of um, think about um, those um, artists and those pairings and how those dialogues would work. And so, yeah, it was, I suppose at that stage, it was going through submissions and we had a number of submissions and they were really high quality, but um, we're thrilled with the four awards that we were able to make and who we have worked with. But yeah, based on conversations really and really thinking curatorially about how, um, how those exchanges would work. Great. I think that's all the questions that we have. Well, thank you so much to everybody for joining us today. Um, thank you. Um, thank you to the British Council, to the Arts, to Arts Council England, to Transforming Narratives, Topu, Pashala, and Rabania, Taswirgaha, and um, most of all to the artists, uh, Samsel, Nalipa, Tanya and Waleed, thank you, thank you so much. It's been fantastic. And as Stephen said, please look out for the small publication, which will be a zine, um, which will be available in January. Um, thank you, everybody. Great. Thank, thank you. To see you. Thank you, everyone, for the presentations. Group wave, bye. <laughs> thank you. Good evening. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you. Thank you. Best wishes.